What are your thoughts on genetically modified foods and glyphosate? I spent a lot of time with Jeffrey Smith. Jeffrey Smith's a good friend of mine. He's the Institute for Responsible Technology founder, probably the leading authority in the world on GMO foods and how GMO foods interact with our microbiome or our bacteria in our gut and can interfere with the bacteria in our gut. I'm not a big fan of genetically modified food. I'm sure nature does it just fine out there. I've been a farmer for all my life, really. I started in the 1970s farming avocado trees. That's where I got the name avocado. And nature does it fine. If you're growing something that the bugs are eating, don't grow that. Grow something else. Or let the bugs have half of it. You eat half of it. Or let the deer have half of it. You have the other half. This this whole thing of like, we're going to spray everything. We're going to chemicalize everything. Really at the bottom of it is greed. It's greed because it's like, you won't let the insects have even a bite. You won't let the raccoons have anything. You just want it all. And that comes down to greed and economics. And, and it's, we're just on a runaway train on that, that track right there. of just like, no, we want everything. We're going to control everything. We're going to do these monocroppings over here. We're going to make sure no bug or no bird or no raccoon or no anything can touch this crop right here. That's unnatural. That's so unnatural. And it's not going to produce a food that's going to make us healthy. And that's going to nourish like a new human being, right? Because we want each generation to get stronger. We want each generation to, to be more intellectually capable. We want each generation to be more connected to the earth. So that direction of monocropping GMO farming is not taking us closer to that goal. The, the real answer is the small family farm where each person has an acre or two and then they just are able, somebody in the family is going to be good at trees. Somebody who's in the family is going to be good at carrots. Somebody in the family is going to be good at maybe fermenting vegetables. And it, it's, it's easy to grow all the food you need in two acres for sure. And I would say you could probably, if you're really clever, you could probably do it in an acre and not, not just for you. I'm mean, talking a whole family. So a family of five could grow all the food they need for sure in two acres, but probably an acre if they're really clever. What type of water should we drink, assuming we don't have access to a local spring? This is such a great question. I, I, I'm a huge water fanatic, actually. And I, I've been going to springs all over the world. I've been to some of the best springs in the world. Some of my favorites are in Iceland. Some of my favorites are in Mount Shasta. California is a really great one I really like a lot. There's some epic ones all across the eastern seaboard of the North American continent, all the way from the North Georgia mountains right into Quebec and Ontario. So I have spent a lot of time in the field checking out springs and the qualities of springs on different continents in different circumstances. It's That's a really fun thing. So I do want to put that out there on the water question is – should you do that? And the answer is yes. If you can, if you have that in your heart to go check out water in, in its natural state, what a great hobby. Now, let's say we're in a situation like in Texas, a lot of people here have wells and the wells typically have high calcium content, which is going to create like a crust on your on your pots and pans and your, and your cups and on your dishes. So here, what I'd recommend is a water softener, right? Something that's going to remove the calcium. Now, people say, well, it is an alkaline water good? Well, that high calcium water is by definition an alkaline water, but I wouldn't say it's good. You don't want to be drinking a lot of crust. You want to be drinking all that scale, you know, that material that accretes on the side of your pots and pans. So you've got to have a water softener in order to bring the calcium down, just to, not only to protect your pipes in your house, but to protect these pipes, because if we don't get a filter, we're going to become a filter. We're going to become the filter unless we get something that's going to stage by stage get the heavy, hard minerals out. There is a relationship with drinking high chalky water and calcification. Because at some point your body's like, hey, that's too much. There's too much calcium there. Now what you could do is you could use like a, a simple ceramic filter as, a, as an idea for a water softener that's real low tech. You know, there's really good self-flushing water softeners now that flush themselves out every week or every two weeks and do it automatically so you don't ever have to go in there and clean the filters out. But if you're doing it low-tech style, you could do just a big ceramic filter. So you pour in on the top and it gradually matriculates the water to the bottom. Then every now and then you're going to have to take that filter out, that ceramic filter, and, and replace it with something else. So you can do it low-tech. Another thing I would say about that is if you're on a municipal water system, there's almost no way to make that water good because there's so many contaminants in that water. And I mean every contaminant. 
deuterium, tritium, every kind of pharmaceutical drug, every kind of recreational drug, every kind of toxic mineral from lead. I mean, we, you know, we've, we're had that crazy expose in Flint, Michigan, that there was still lead in the water in America. There is, it's massively a problem in America and many other things work their way into the water supply. So is it possible to have a, a water purifier that can completely correct that problem? I doubt it. There are really good ones out there, though. And if you're stuck in that situation, you should seek out the best you can find. I know many friends in that world, and it's a great world to be in to you know, help people purify their water right there at their tap and right into their house. And also, again, I just want to put that out there. When you get the calcium out, when you get the iron and other major heavy mineral contaminants out of the water, you're protecting the pipes in your house. So you're actually protecting your house. So you don't one day have to replumb the whole house. I've seen houses in Long Island, for example, where I, you know, somebody came to one of my events in Long Island and they were like, I, my water, I, something's wrong with my water. I said, go down the basement, take it just a wrench and just bang the pipes down in the basement, just bang the water pipes. This was a 90 year old house. So then she, she went to lunch. She did that. She brought back and I said, turn your water on and then bring me a, a jug of that water back. She came back with a jug of that water. And of course, when she banged the pipes, there was all kinds of corrosion that was on the inside that got knocked off. Ultimately, what I'm saying is her place needs to be replumbed. She, she, those pipes are too old. It's all accreted with stuff. We're living in those environments, not even realizing it. So that's another issue to think about is again, get a, get a filter for your home because otherwise your home, your pipes will become the filter and they'll accrete all kinds of corrosion on the inside of that pipe that will eventually cause your house a catastrophe. Oops.